Six ways to build trust after cheating. Now, the big question is this. Is it really possible for a relationship to work after an incidence of infidelity, after the husband or the wife have been found cheating? Is that possible? Will the relationship even work? Now, the simple answer is yes. But it will take some drastic steps for you to salvage such a relationship. Now here are six ways that if you follow, you might have a chance to rebuilding your relationship again. The first one is the need to take accountability. There is no way around it. It gets to a point where you come and become clean and say, you know what? I'm taking the blame. I did it. I know what I did was not good, but I'm taking the blame. I'm not trying to justify myself. What I did was wrong. Now, look at this situation where we see someone who is taking the blame. There was a lady called Abigail. Now, the husband was called Nabal, and Nabal was very rude towards David, and David became so angry and said, you know what? I'm going to kill the husband. And Abigail decided, you know what? If there will be any solutions, I have to take the blame. So the Bible says in 1 Samuel 25 verse 24 that Abigail fell at her feet and said, this is before David, I accept all the blame in this matter. My Lord, please listen to what I have to say. I know Nabal is a wicked and ill-tempered man. Please don't pay attention to him. He is a fool just as his name suggests. But I never saw the messengers that you sent. Abigail was known to be very intelligent. The fact that she was vulnerable and she went before David and took the blame, it made David not to go ahead and spill blood. Now, the second thing that the person that cheated needs to do, they have to apologize with sincerity. You know, taking accountability means you go with a heart that is so repentant. You go with a heart that is remorseful, a heart that actually means sorry. You know, there is a way you can apologize and you can just tell this person is not sincere. Now, look at what happened to David. David was involved in adultery with a lady called Bathsheba. Now, if you read the book of uh, Psalms 51, you can see David coming to God with a heart that is so repentant. He came with a broken and contrite spirit. The Bible says in Psalms 51, Have mercy on me, God, because of your unfailing love, because of your great compassion. Blot out the stain of my sins. If you read verse 17 of chapter 51, the Bible says, The sacrifice you want is a broken spirit, a broken and repentant spirit heart. By the way, anytime you go before God with a broken and repentant heart, the Bible says he will not despise. There is no one who can look down on someone who is very broken and repentant. Number three, you have to end the affair. There is no way you are coming back to your relationship and you are still seeing someone in your office. You have to break off that affair after you have you are open you are very sincere with what you're doing now the next thing is to say no to this affair now remember the story of jesus there's a, a woman who was brought before jesus because she had committed adultery and the bible says in john 8 10 has no one condemned you no one sir she said then neither do i condemn you then this was jesus's instruction to her and says go now and live your life of sin Go now and sin no more. That affair has to end now. The fourth thing that needs to happen, especially for the guy that cheated, you have to become very transparent. Because the next couple of weeks, my friend, you'll be grilled. You'll be asked questions. You will have to be honest with every question that she's asking you. Every honest that he's asking you. You'll have to be very honest with yourself. And you are going to get a lot of difficult questions. Now, this is what happened in the book of Genesis 16. Now, Abraham has slept with the house girl. And now here is Sarah. Remember, she's the one that pushed Abraham to go and sleep with her. But look at what is happening here. Sarah is blaming Abraham and she's asking very tough questions. Genesis 16 verse 4. So Abraham slept with Hagar and she became pregnant. When Hagar knew she was pregnant, she began to treat her mistress Sarai with contempt. Now look at what is happening to Sarah, questioning Abraham. It's all your fault. 
Now this servant of mine is pregnant and she despises me. Though I gave her the privilege of sleeping with you, the Lord will make you pay for doing this to me. Verse 6 of uh, Genesis 16, he says, Since she is your servant, you may deal with her as you see fit. Number five, this is for the partner that was cheated on. Do not personalize your partner's action. No blame games. Now that he's here, don't use it as an excuse to make him feel like he's guilty at all times. Don't use this time to torment him. Now he's back, he's become honest, he's become very repentant, he's remorseful. Don't personalize it because sometimes it's very easy to think it's because you're not beautiful anymore or there's something that you did and sometimes you need to allow yourself not to think that you're the one who is a bad one here. Look at what happened when the story of Adam and Eve. When they ate the forbidden fruit, they started blaming each other. They started throwing blames towards each other. The Bible says in the book of Genesis, when God asked, what did you guys do? The man started saying, the woman whom you gave to me, she's the one that gave me the fruit and I ate it. Then the Lord said to the woman, what is this you have done? And the woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate it. Now it's become a blame game. So do not personalize this thing. Yes, it's happened. Now it's time to move on. You need to allow this person to actually settle in. We are trying to fix things. Don't start activating the wound by, by all the time going back to the wound. Allow this situation to heal and cool down. Now, number six, the thing that should happen, you need to also focus on forgiveness. There is no way you're going to have a relationship without forgiveness. And by the way, unforgiveness creates an opportunity for the devil to pounce on your relationship. If you don't forgive, cheating will happen again and again and again. It's going to become a pattern that will never end. It's going to be a vicious cycle. Now look at what the Bible says in the book of Colossians uh, chapter 3 verse 13. Bear with each other. Forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues put on love which, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Forgiveness is necessary for that relationship to actually work. You can never move unless you agree. And one of the ways you're going to work together is by forgiving each other and saying, now let's focus our eyes on the future ahead. Now, a bonus point, you can never build trust unless you involve Jesus in your life. There's something that happens when the Spirit of God comes upon you. He gives you the grace to go upon that season and he also gives you the strength to actually forgive. It's difficult to forgive people, but the Holy Spirit gives you the strength to ensure that you can forget the things of the past and focus on the future.